Hi, and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around, I have another cool product from Devor. Uh, this company makes all range of products, so I'm assuming this one's made for them. This is a new handheld thermal camera from Devor. Uh, it, I have reviewed one of these before, not from Vivor, but from Banggood or one of those sites. And uh, this one seems like it's going to be an evolved version that's an improvement on the old design. Maybe not spec-wise uh, externally, but they're sort of polishing up some rough details about the previous models. Anyways, the packaging looks really nice. Vivor has really stepped up their game, including even putting serial numbers and part numbers like they're... Uh, they're trying to hit the mainstream here, uh, mainstream high end. So that's that's kind of interesting to me. The packaging is really beautiful. I'm always mixed on beautiful packaging because although I really like to see it and it's fun to open a really cool, intricately designed packaging pro uh, product with packaging, uh, I know it's all going in the trash. So I I'm very conflicted because it's a total waste and it you know it's hard on the environment just throwing all this crap out. But uh, the packaging is very nice on this. They really went the extra mile there. Uh, looks like we've got a product certificate with a serial number and an inspection stamp, which, you know, in the old days used to be bogus. Uh, could still be, but hard to say. Uh, looks like they're putting a lot more effort into it. There's also a calibration certificate with a serial number and a manual. And historically, the Vivor manuals have been much, much better than average. They clearly have a, a native English speaker there or someone who's really good at English uh, because the quality has gotten so much better and they're pretty easy to read in general. They start out tough. So the camera itself is uh, is pretty large. It's similar to the old one that I reviewed except this that one used AA batteries. This one uses an internal lithium ion battery. So they include a charging cable that goes to any five volt standard uh, charger, which we probably all have sitting around home. Comes with a case and even a 16 gigabyte uh, micro secure digital card to do your recordings on. So that's pretty awesome. Let's dig into this deeper. The case for it is a simple bag. Uh, looks like it's nylon. Nice material, sticky, uh, sort of that weird sticky nylon, it's coated nylon stuff, uh, shiny, kind of nice. Uh, you have to charge this guy before you use it. Let's see, the charging port is up here. Oh, nice. And the micro secure digital port's also up here. This is IP54, so that's why they've got this gasketed uh, sealing plug here. So I'm going to put the micro secure digital card in here, charge this guy up, and uh, then we'll give it a test run. The, the over mold is really fantastic. The whole fit and feel of this thing is uh, very, very well done. The balance is pretty reasonable. It's all balanced right around this center point here, so it feels good in the hand. doesn't feel uncomfortable. It's heavier than I expected, probably because it's got a big lithium-ion battery. This thing, they claim that there's nine hours runtime. With the double A's, I get like 20 minutes runtime. So uh, big improvement there. So let's put the micro secure digital card in, charge this guy up, and uh, look further. So while this guy's charging, Incidentally, which I'm not sure that it is charging because I can't see any indicator lights that is charging It'd be really nice if there was something to let you know that it was actually charging and maybe it's not because Maybe there is a hidden indicator light that I can't see but in any case I haven't looked at the manual yet But I plugged it into a charger and I don't see any action going on here, but maybe it is charging um, So this unit is good from minus 4 to 662 Fahrenheit uh, with a sensitivity of 0 0.07 degrees Fahrenheit, which is almost 0 0.1, better, better than 0 0.1 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty amazing. Or for Celsius people, minus 20 to 350 Celsius with a sensitivity of 0 0.04 degrees Celsius. The IR sensor, which is the big deal, that's the expensive part of these things here, is 240 by 180 uh, resolution, 43,200 pixels at 20 frames per second. So they, they haven't gotten up to real time. It's a little slower than film. Film is 24 frames a second. Uh, video is 25 or 50, depending whether you're in Europe or the United States, frames per second. So uh, there will be a little stuttering. At 24 frames of film, when they're, they're panning quickly, you can see stuttering in the video. So this is going to stutter even more than that. Uh, that's why uh, one of the reasons for NTSC being a little faster, also the fact that we're 60 hertz based uh, power in this country. But without getting into too many details, moving on, the field of view is 52 degrees by 40 degrees, which is a pretty wide, wide field of view. And um, I've already covered the fact that this is good for IP54, so water resistant, and it can take a 6.6 .6 foot drop. They did a really nice job with the over mold on this thing. Like I said, this thing feels really good. You can't feel any seams. Uh, between the rubber, uh, just 
overall really solid and nice feel. It also has uh, LEDs work light built in, which is kind of weird. So uh, that, that's another nice feature, I guess, if you're working in the dark there. So that's the basic specs of this thing, and hopefully this guy's charging. One main spec I forgot is the price on this guy. It's currently listed at $250.99, which if you get one of the Vivor coupons, that'll drop it even more. That is a very good price. If you compare this to the Fleur, uh, which is owned by Fluke now, a whole lot more expensive, probably $600 kind of range or more. So uh, that's pretty awesome. They're making it affordable for the homeowner. I was cruising through the manual here and it says that there are three models of this camera. The SC240N, the SC240M, and the SC240H. And that this one does not include the visible light camera, which is interesting. It's nice to have the visible light overlay on the picture. So this one doesn't include that. Uh, the other two models also go to 550 Celsius instead of just 350 Celsius. So if that's true, uh, this is the low-end model, and there are two better models. I would always recommend getting the visible light overlay option uh, because it makes for a, it makes it easy because the resolution of this is blocky enough that sometimes it's hard to tell if you're looking for something very detailed like a circuit board. You're looking for a component that's hot. It can be harder to tell. With the visible light overlay, you can see where that component is. Although they all suffer from, you know, uh, alignment issues because the the infrared camera is not located in the same place as the physical camera. They're close together, but their field of view slight, they diverge. They're only accurate, the overlay is only accurate one specific distance. Anything before or after that, and it'll shift the image above or below or left or right of the, well, above or below the, uh, the actual location of the part. So they're not perfect, by any especially if you're a distance away. Uh, we can power this guy up. Uh, it's charging right now, but or I think it's charging right now, but we can power this guy up. So we can press and hold and power this guy up. It takes a little bit of time. It's got a color LCD display, which makes sense because uh, when you're viewing infrared, you want to see a range of colors. So that they could do it with black and white and shades of gray, but it's prettier in color. So this, can't, this thing actually reboots and takes like uh, 15 seconds to boot. All right, let's set the language. So English, I'm guessing it's the enter key here. Oh, maybe the center key, there we go. Ah, the date. All right, wow, straight into it, huh? This looks, wow, if this is not a visible light overlay, the quality of this image is absolutely fantastic. Better than any infrared imager I've ever seen before. Uh, personally, I have never held a FLIR, but holy cow, you can just see on my bench here, the, well, here, I guess you can't very easily, but the image quality is pretty amazing. Uh, and you can take a picture with the trigger in front, and they show min-max on the screen. You can set alarms. The higher-end models, besides having a visible camera, also have Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, so I guess you can send images and or possibly video to a different source. I'm not sure what all the features are because they don't talk about it in the manual here. But the uh, image quality of this thing is, is better than any one I've ever seen. By far better than the previous one I looked at. You can see the charger on the wall. Well, actually, I guess you can't. The charger on the wall is getting warm. There are four color palettes to choose from. So you have uh, white is hot just black and white and I guess you can't see this but I, I will show you some images later uh, white is hot black is hot so the darker images are the hot items iron which I'm guessing the hot items are closer to white and the cooler items tend towards the blue end of the spectrum and then rainbow but again white and red are hot on the rainbow selection so four different color palettes I like that I think iron is my favorite. Uh, let's see. So settings, you just hit the center button and scroll down. So let's see, measurement parameter. Missivity you can set based on what items you're doing if you want to get really accurate measurements. Uh, distance half a meter. Uh, temperature scale. Minus 20 to 150 or 100 to 350. So if you're going to measure super hot items, uh, you got to pick the right scale. You won't be able to hit it with the standard one, 20 to 150. That would be for like household. Uh, high low alert, so you can turn alarms on if you reach above or below a certain temperature. 
photo settings, photo autosave is on. I will turn that on because when I click the button, I just want it to save the picture. Temperature units, well, I live in North America and we are used to Fahrenheit. Celsius or Kelvin would be good. Kelvin is just like Celsius, except that it's based on absolute zero. So zero Kelvin is minus 273.15 Celsius. Uh, zero being absolute zero. Hopefully you can see this. I know the angle makes it a little tough. Uh, date and time, language, display brightness. It's currently on high. Auto power off. I think that's good to have on. 20 minute turns off and system settings. Factory reset, format secure digital card. Let's just do that. Format succeeded. Boy, that was fast. And a factory reset. Okay. This is a shot of the doorway leading into my garage workshop. And you can see that as heat rises, it's a lot hotter at the top of the door than the bottom, shown by the dark blue color at the bottom with the doggy door there. Uh, there's a shirt hanging on the door which adds some insulation, interestingly enough. This might be considered a dog tax, but you can see that the top of its skull is a little bit cooler than its eye sockets or the area in its abdomen where it's curled around. Pretty interesting. This is my hand, and you can sensibly see the fingers are cooler than the palm area of the hand. Uh, that's why people get frostbite in their fingers first, less blood flow. This is more dog tax, and you can see that the dog is much warmer than the surrounding room. I believe our house was set at 65 Fahrenheit. Here's a shot of the front door of our house, and you can see the bottom leaks like a sieve. All that cold air coming in, also around the edges, because the insulation on the door is not particularly good. You can even see the peephole in the center where there's less insulation. This is a shot of the refrigerator, and you can see the ice maker is warmer than the rest of the area, because there's a light there and electronics that heat it up. Uh, the face of the refrigerator is sort of room temperature and then you can see as heat rises and the compressor on the bottom all cause it to be hotter than the surrounding area especially the refrigerator itself here's a shot of my wife and you can see that the hair the nose and the clothes are closer to room temperature while the exposed skin is much warmer <laughs> she probably wouldn't like this shot Yet more dog tacks, although here you can see that the nose is much cooler than the rest of the dog, and we all know they have cold and wet noses. Here's my foot, and you can see that as my foot gets closer to the clothing, it's much warmer, and the toes are much cooler. Again, why you get frostbite on your extremities first, because not enough blood flow to keep them the same as your core body temperature. This is the shot of the washer in operation, and you can see where the electronics are in the upper right, much warmer than the rest of the washer. Also, the inside, although it was a hot water wash, uh, there's a big plastic uh, air-gapped uh, spacer on the inside of the washer, so it's a good insulator. This is a shot of a soldering iron being held up. Starts at 140 degrees, roughly, going up to 278, continuing up to 291 as it heats up. This all is over a matter of just a minute or so. 356 and then heading to 556. And finally, stopping at 660.7. The max feature, very handy, did it without me intervening at all. Another shot of my wife, and you can see that the hair, the glasses, and the nose are cooler, as well as some of the clothing, than the skin itself. This was lava cake, appropriately named because of the color. No, I'm just kidding. It was a hot brownie coming out of the oven, and you can see that it's much hotter than the surrounding area. It does look like I'm eating lava, though, doesn't it? More dog tacks, purely because I can. This is the TV and receiver in the front room with the TiVo next to it. You can see that the receiver is very hot and the TiVo is warmer than the surrounding area. Strangely enough, the TV is also much warmer at the bottom. I think that's where all the PC boards are. This is an organic LED TV, so it should all be the same temperature, at least from the LED's perspective, but it's not. The walls of my house are, house are very poorly insulated, and you can see where the 2x4s are in the wall. They're better insulation than the air gap space between them and you can actually see all of that in the wall. If I had good insulation that should all look like internal room temperature which it does not. There's a little bit of insulation in the ceiling and you can see that it's closer to room temperature. You can still see where the 2x4s are and the wall across from it. Again corner of the room and you can see where all the 2x4s come together and where the fire blocks are put in. Really obvious. If the insulation was good shouldn't be so obvious but could be handy in the future. 
I'm now outside my house looking in, and you can see that heat is just bleeding from every crack and crevice of the house, especially around the front door there. Uh, pretty sad. The roof is moderately insulating, which is good, uh, but the rest of my house is a sad statement, especially being in Southern California. I could definitely use a lot more insulation. This one's only sort of dog tax. What I thought was really cool is you can see the spots where the dogs stepped on the couch just seconds before and it left heated marks on the couch. I think that is totally cool. Check that out. You can tell where the dogs have been just a few seconds before. The next couple images are what the old camera, thermal camera, looked like just shooting the room in my living room. And in the center would be the TV. There it is, nice and hot. Uh, yeah, that's the quality of what I was expecting this camera to be. You can tell they're absolutely night and day different. The new camera is so much better than the old one, it's hard to describe. And yet another shot with the two cameras side by side, both shooting the exact same scene, TV on the left, TV on the right, although the one camera's got a little bit lower, but you can see that uh, the quality is significantly different. Heck, you can even see the uh, two by fours in the walls on the camera on the right, which is the Vivor camera. The old camera is on the left. So bottom line is the new camera, the image quality is night and day better. I wish it had the visual image part, you know, vi visual image overlay, but I can live without it because the resolution of the new sensor is so much better than the old one. Uh, bottom line is the camera is excellent. The uh, temperature sensitivity is excellent. I give this two thumbs up. I'll be using this at work for troubleshooting electronics because you can pick hot items up off a PC board. And with this one, even without the visual overlay, I think I'll be able to see it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.